Good evening, and welcome to the Mysterious Feed here. I am your host, Bob Newhart, and in today's episode, three kids named Helen, Tafia, and Eleanor get missing in the woods one night while looking for their camp teacher. Uh, what? Oh, excuse me, I had the wrong script. Oh, the worst script they put in a storyteller's contract these days. Anyways, I am Bob Newhart, and yes, I understand you know my name already, but I am reading you a new tale. Now tell me, do you like video games? If, if for one, I don't, why do you ask? Well, it's normally because I'm just a 91-year-old man who is still an actor, or at least that's what I think. And another reason is that I easily get attracted by badass female women. If I am too close to the screen, one of the games that, called, that I used to grow up playing was me not liking video games is something called Blaze Blue. Now here's how you pronounce it. It goes like this, Blaze Blue. For those of you who have never played it, Blaze Blue is a fighting series game developed and published by Japan by a company called Arc System Works. Now, later localized in North America as Akis Games and Europe by Zen United. Now, an anime adaptation that aired in the fall of 2013, Blaze Blue has a series of 7.7 million games as of August 2012. Now let me discuss something. There is a lost version of the game that is called Blaze Blue Condinum Shift. For those for you who are convenient, there's another pronunciation. Continuum Shift. Sorry, it's just because people might get confused and not understand what the word actually is. Now here is the problem. I have a game. First, there is this character named Noelle Vermilion. You know how old, oldish she is. She's five now, you, before you may ask. I am not trying to get, well, crazy over this girl. I mean, she looks like a teenager or a woman in her 20s, but enough already. Let me tell you the story about the cursed copy of Blaze Blue Cond Continuum Shift. It all started a long time ago. I live with my father, who was named Professor Charles, and my mother was named Ginna. We lived on the, on the farm, and my job on the farm was to get milk from the cows and feed the chickens. While my sister Lucy Hardfella was about to plow, me and Lucy have been milking and plowing for so long that our dad thinks that our minds have gone. But no, that's our job so we didn't, that didn't matter to us. By the time I got super old, I had officially decided to move out of my parents' house and move into a big city. I moved to New York where I lived in the apartment near Times Square with my, my new wife named Jane March. I also have three kids and their names are Sophia, Telly, and Ted Wiggins. Now, I love my kids and I love to protect Sophia from dirty content since she is the age between 6 and 8. Let me tell you something, Aunt Braham. Looking at this stuff can get you really crazy, see, and make you feel very weird. And that's what happened to me. Now for my kids, they tend to call me Grandpa. Why? Most of it because I said I am a 91 year old, ma old man. But most of the obvious reason is that they never met my old other family. I asked them if they want to spend a night at my family's place, and but they said no as they did not want to be far from home. Anyways, let me discuss about the cursed copy of this video game. I have somewhat explaining. I own a business where I where peop I have people write stories. The name of the business is Geoshia Creepypasta Wiki. Now a lot of people say that this wiki is terrible mainly due to amount of crappy pages. There is another guy who owned the place, but he retired at a young age. Since it's been a long time, I cannot identify the details of this strange person. Now, I have a lot of problems with my business, and one of them being the fact that I, that I once got vandalized by a bunch of people who sent me dead images of cats and Avengers Endgame posters with spoilers. The other being the fact that my employees was named as Talk Tick, who tried to delete a story about Sesame Street I thought was important. What a loser. One day, my two favorite employees' names were Chick Gizzard Lips, as Shuko Kargi came into my office, declaring that, that they really needed a vacation. And that's what I did. Luckily, I told them that they can close on the business for two weeks and they, I can forget all the stress. And I did. But for some reason, I asked them if they would need to spend some more quality time with me since they were my two favorite employees after all. They all said yes. The first thing we did was we decided to go to GameStop 
since I haven't been there in a super long time. Well, to be honest, whenever it's a cloudy day and I see a lot of modern 8-bit games, I think about it all the weirdest times as possible. But luckily I managed to archive my dream, achieve my dreams as I calmly made my way into the store. However, when I walked inside the store, this young girl named Ashley Spinelli was throwing a tantrum because she couldn't have any LEGO games due to a lot of them not being on sale as the discs were overtaken. As I looked for the PC free game section, I felt Hallelujah Choir going off. Next to a copy of Mortal Kombat 9 was a copy of Blaze Boo Continuum Shift. I mean, it looked normal. I went to the store clerk, and whose name was Morshu, but I, before I asked him about the copies, he said, Fighting RPG Sports, you want it? It's yours, my friend, as long as you have enough money. Supposedly, the game was on sale, and they had a disc for it. I was going to relieve my memories of when I saw my wife play this game. I allowed Chick Gizzard and Astico to go home, but instead of driving them home, Astico used her broom to fly home to where she and Gizzard live. I went home and got on my PS3 from the closet and began relieving my memories just entering the home menu, starting the game. However, even though for the cover the game looked normal, the original game didn't have for starters. Instead of the usual opening cutscenes what could be in any version of Continuum Shift, I instead was greeted by what appeared to be a commercial featuring Tuxedo Patrick selling Oreos and then another commercial involving Gordon then Tuba Snout. Now look at the poster saying that you could win the jackpot, Jack's Box's stuff, but the employees who worked in Jack in the Box were not eligible to participate. Anyways, there was this another commercial, but I skipped all that crap because there was going to the title screen. I went to the arcade mode only to recognize something awful. First off, I saw Iron Ta Tagger, and he looked a lot like the orange version of Ray Manuels. Now Matiko Naya was she was simply Mr. Fox that was in a disc mod or something cause I could not believe what I was seeing. I picked my babe who is Noel Vermilion and I decided to pretend that this was a mod because I had been taking baths or something. But no, I clearly wasn't. I quit baths a long time ago. Anyways, the first character I was facing off was Rachel Halushard. He, her stage was the Alucard Castle fro in the fog, but when that's when I wanted to yell at the TV. Noelle's confrontation, or should I say introduction, was way different. First off, she sounded like Bill Cosby, and she said something that I heard from the story I once read before. This is what she said. This is Noelle Vermillion coming to you for fun, and you might learn something before it's done. She, then she started pointing at Rachel while talking more in Bill Cosby impression. Hey, 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 bing, bang, boom, 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 you look like a small mushroom. What? This is what's just wrong, since women don't have the thing. And why the hell would they even say that in front of women? I was fighting her off, but some people said such as Sid Chain and Ronnie Ann, Winston Big, and even bootleg Japito cheered for Noel to kick Rachel's ass. But once I finished fighting her... I just wanted to throw up because Noel, what he did was disgusting. He started kissing her. Excuse me for a second. Goes to throw up. Okay, I'm back. Why did I exactly throw up over two women kissing? Because I'm not that much, much into, well, two women having romance. Now, I'm not sure if Noel and Rachel were gay because they could not be true since there's no evidence. But as for the story, it's just a joke. The next fighter I faced off was, you guessed it, Mr. Fox, who can also be seen as Makido Nayada, but instead of the Heritage Museum was in the original stage, I instead fought her near Mr. Fox's home. Mr. Fox was a good friend of Mr. Badger and was watching him fight Noel. I fought Mr. Fox and moved into the next battle, but I did continue on with the arcade mode. No, I didn't. For some reason, I left the PS3 on, on to head down to McDonald's to grab some food. I ordered a box of chicken nuggets and then the fries with a coke and a specialized Szechuan sauce. Gee, I hope that Rick Vicenzi didn't notice that I had the sauce that he has been looking for. While I ate some chicken nuggets in my car, one of them started to talk. I later learned that they were McNugget buddies, 
I apologize for trying to eat the family so they forgive me. When I got back home, I went into training mode on the game and was playing. I still played it as my babe. I picked the circus stage since it was looked interesting. But when I got to the stage itself, it looked like the same scarecrows that were talking away all the stage props. Like for example, a fat ass turning clowns and elephants into somewhat dancing pirates. The room was very replaced by E.L. Rizitas and his friend was bringing up the table to tell some jokes. That all remained robotic drummers on the walls. I just decided to feed the Ranga and then listen to the Spanish guys talking. But it wasn't until El Recitas then told the character I was playing told Noel to, well, strip her clothes off. I then took the game out entirely and went back to GameStop and for a refund. I slammed the game on the counter asking now for the sake and meaning of this cursed copy. Marsha proceeded to tell me that he went to his house one night and added a lot of mods to the disc. I dialed the police for him because it sounded like a pirated game. The police arrived and arrested him. Luckily, one of the employees at GameStop gave me a true copy of the game, and now I'm playing it normally. Well, what's that? That's all the time I have today because of what has happened in the story. I hope you all enjoy it. Moral of the story, never played, it, pu played pirated games. Now, since I've got my time left, let's sing a goodbye song. This was really fun. We hope you like it too. Seems like it's just begun when we suddenly we are through. Goodbye, goodbye, good friends, goodbye. Cause now it's time to go. Hey, but hey, I say, well, that's okay. Cause we'll vi see you very soon, I know. Very soon, I know. Well, alright, I'm gonna let that slide. See ya. And that, my little pretties, was uh, Blaze Blue Continuum Shift, the curse copy. A, um, you could definitely, um, a, um, what was it? Oh, yeah. A Blaze Blue Lost Game Creep Pasta. Well, or Funny Pasta, written by, um, Ashley Armbruster, aka, um, Garfield Fan. Um, my final thoughts in, in the, on this story. Okay, I know I was requested this maybe a couple months ago, and I did leave this bookmarked for a while because I was trying to find time to get to it. Well, I finally found the opportunity to get to this story, so yeah. What did I actually think about this story? Well, in my opinion, I honestly found this one to be really funny. Like, it was a really funny, um... It was a really funny story. Like, I honestly... I honestly really do find this one to be quite silly, too. Especially, you know, with, um, the characters going all crazy, doing their own thing and all that. I mean, it's pretty funny, like, to be honest. So, I did spot maybe a few grammatical errors in this story and a few punctuation errors, but other than that, it was a pretty funny story. I'm not gonna lie. I like how Bob Newhart, you know, you know, basically was the protagonist of the story. I mean, I have seen some Bob Newhart's movies, like, a long time ago. And I'm gonna be honest, I remember, um, watching, you know, his movies, and I actually seen, watched a couple of them when, when I was a kid. I mean, he's, like, now 92 already, so, yeah, there's definitely that. But I really do, um, like some shows like The Bob Newhart Show. Oh my goodness, that one was something. He did appear in The Big Bang Theory at one point, from what I do remember. But I know he did appear in, you know, some other movies and that, so, yeah, I mean, I haven't really watched his stuff, you know, his movies in, like, years, like, I think the last time I did was the Rudolph one, the one from 1998, I know he did voice in it, so, yeah, there's definitely that, I mean, it's pretty good, to be honest, that I actually got a chance to, you know, take a look at the story, I mean, the story was pretty funny, like, I mean, the whole concept of its own self, I'm, I'm not gonna lie right here, I think it was kind of silly, but it was pretty funny, because I know this is like a funny pasta, so of course it's meant to be silly, so there's definitely that. I really do find this story to be, you know, an enjoyable pasta. It's definitely well made in detail, and I honestly found this story read to be, well, it's readable, I'm gonna say, although I did spot maybe a few grammatical errors in the story, like maybe just, um... A few punctuation errors, but other than that, it's a pretty good story, I'm not gonna lie. It's a really well-made, um, concept for the story. 
of its own self. Now, I haven't watched, um, well, story, yeah. I haven't read this story, well, I think I've read this story once when I got requested, and I thought of it to be pretty good, so I was trying to find, you know, time to, you know, read, to narrate it when I have to, the time, and I finally did have the opportunity to narrate it, so, yeah, which is now. In my opinion, I really found this one to be a good story. It's not a bad one. It's a pretty good funny pasta. Now, I'm going to sit here and say this right now. Um, I would have to suggest maybe fix up the grammatical errors. Like, I mean, there was a few of them I did spot in there along with the, some of the punctuation errors. But other than that, it's a pretty good story. I'm not going to lie. It was a really funny one. It was definitely well made in detail and... If you like, um, funny pastas, um, uh, feel free to check this one out. Um, this one was on the CJ March Wiki. And yeah, um, Ashley Armbruster did request me to read this, um, story maybe a couple months ago. I can't honestly remember when he, um, actually sent this to me. I think it might have been, um, maybe June or July. I'm not really sure, but I finally had the time to narrate it, so there it is. <laughs> so yeah, um, I honestly found this one to be a really good story. Really do find this one to be amazing. It's well made, well detailed, and I honestly found this one to be quite amazing. I know I'm repeating myself, but still. Anyways, with that being the case, that being said, I'm gonna sit here and, well, say this right now. This is just simply my own personal opinion. If you happen to disagree with me, that's fine too. We're all entitled to own opinions regarding these creep pastas. This is just simply my own personal thoughts. Uh, my final rating of the story would have to be a. 10 out of 10. It's a really good funny pasta. I do find it to be enjoyable. It was definitely well made. I really found this one to be, you know, had a good concept of its own self. It's a pretty good story and I really like it. So anyways, uh, with that being the case, that being said, uh, what did you guys think about this story? Did you all enjoy it? Did you all not? Also, what we have done personally to help make this story a lot better? Feel free to leave me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. I'm the Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. And if you're new to my channel, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I make brand new videos every single day. Don't forget to ring the notification bell to when I upload so that way you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, please roll the outro because I'm out.